Sure. Uh, my name is Mike Adams. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, my daughter is Addison, uh, Addison Adams. She was born with a inoperable heart defect and Down syndrome. Uh, she was given very little chance to live. In fact, she, we took her home on hospice, expecting her, the doctors told us that she would pass. Uh, norm, uh, they expected it to be about a week. And she just celebrated her 13th birthday in February. So we are blessed to have her every day. Well, I think the, you know, and it, it, it's, you may want to title it leadership, but I think it, you're really just speaking out for your child. Um, you know, they don't have the ability to understand what's going on. They don't have the ability to make decisions for themselves. So you're really taking that role as, as a parent and becoming, a, you know, you're more outspoken, you're more involved in the decision making instead of just sitting back and, you know, uh, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. It's more of a team effort uh, when you start working in more of a, with your caseworkers, with your, your uh, you know, the programs out there that you, you really become more involved into it, more invested in it, because it is now affecting your child. You know, when we continually to this day have her IEPs, you know, she's, she's gone from elementary school to middle school, and we've had to make sure, you know, okay, does the PE teacher know about her heart defect? What, what are the, you know, do we have, we have to meet with the school nurses? What is the plan? What's the, when we write up the IEP, we had to have them rewrite it this last time because they, they included some information there that was incorrect. Again, as a parent, I didn't think that was a, uh, as much of a leadership role, but it, you know, when you start uh, thinking about it, it really is because you are speaking out not only, you know, for your child, but you want to make them more aware of, not, you know, other children with disabilities that, that services are in situations that may be similar to mine. Well, it really kind of just parlayed into it. You know, we went to um, a leadership uh, retreat for parents uh, over the weekend. It was like a a two day thing. Then we had to go back for another day, five, five weeks later, six weeks later. And we had met other parents who were involved in our uh, Nebraska's ICC, which is our ECICC, which is early childhood interagency coordinating council. And it's speaking with them. And I, I was talking to a mother and she goes, you know, I'm coming off this council. Would you be interested in serving on it? And I'll tell you what, as a parent, you know, once I got approved and appointed by the governor, I ended up serving two, three year terms. And it was really eye opening. Um, you know, there are times where you think you're out there on an island with your child and that no one's hearing you. No one's, uh, you know, these those people, the higher ups, uh, whether they're with the state organization or they're with the local school district or what have you that they're not listening when in fact they are. They're doing everything they can for your children, uh, you know, for your the children throughout the state to make sure that they're getting the services that they need. Um, so it was really, and the so it was kind of unique. I went from being a, going to these meetings, not knowing what the heck they were talking about. You know, they call it all the acronyms alphabet soup um, to being the chairperson for the last two years and really understanding it, really appreciating uh, the work that they do. The frustrating side is knowing that there are certain limitations, whether it's budgetary or what have you, that a state can do. Uh, and where there's, you know, what else can we do? Where are shortfalls? What else, what's attainable? You know, let's set a goal that we can actually achieve. You hear the same thing. I don't have time. I don't know what to do. I don't, this, you know, it doesn't interest me. It's really frustrating to hear that. Um, 
you know, you almost want to say you don't have time to represent your child, to do the best thing you can do for your child, to make sure they're getting their services taken care of, to making sure you're speaking not only for your child or other children. Um, that's the really shocking side of it. Um, you know, not only am I a dad, I'm a husband, I, I'm an employee, I am a uh, youth, a youth uh, sports coach. Uh, I serve on a nonprofit that we started here in Omaha for dads of children with Down syndrome. And then I'm also the chairperson for our golf outing that we do as our fundraiser. Um, so I don't like to hear that I don't have time. I, I don't want to do, you know, I'm just too busy with work or what have you. It just, that's, I think that, and I think, you know, some people are just shy, um, that they, they don't like to get into groups or, you know, once you're into, a, uh, you're in that leadership role, you know, I think the worst thing that anybody could do is just sit back on their hands and not be involved in it. Um, you know, that was probably me in my first couple meetings, uh, just because I didn't know anybody there. I was, you know, I wasn't meeting, meeting with people on a daily basis. We met quarterly, but once you get into it and you start meeting people, you start interacting with them. When you have breakout sessions, what have you, you can email them if you have questions. So there's, I mean, they're very, um, welcoming to people. Um, but I think that's probably the, you know, and I think maybe perhaps the final reason is that people just think that they're, I, they, I don't have a voice. I don't, I can go to the top of the mountain and scream my head off, but who's going to hear me? So they, they just say, you know, we're, I think we're just stuck doing what we're doing or getting what we're getting. There's, there's no reason to join these committees or be in this leadership role if, if nobody's going to listen to me. I think we had a couple, we had one parent come to our group because uh, we would do family stories uh, during our lunch sessions and we would have uh, a family uh, that was receiving services come and share the story. I got to do that uh, one time I brought Addie, uh, Addie got, she loved it because she got out of school. Uh, I had my mother bring uh, Addie down to our meeting which was in, Link our meetings were in Lincoln. And I uh, did a slideshow and share everybody shared Addie's story with everybody and kind of put a little personal touch on it. And I think, you know, having the parents come and even if, you know, if they come and they just sit in the corner, that's okay. But I think they need, they need to come and feel welcome. And even if it's just a 15 minute share their story, make them feel like they're already part of the part of the uh, process when they do come and just even just to spectate. The best advice I can give them is to not be afraid. Um, you know, you're going to learn a lot. You're, there's going to be a lot initially that's probably right over way over your head, like it was mine. Um, you have to remember that the you know on our, for example, on Nebraska's ICC, there's a lot of people that are representing different departments throughout the state, different facilities, different organizations. They do it every day. You know, I always compared it to that. They are the generals making the decisions, but as parents, we are, we're the ones on the front lines. We are the ones that need to report back that, hey, this is what's happening. This is what we're seeing. And it may be, you know, it may be the exact same subject of what they think they is happening throughout the state. But when you put it into words that, no, this is what we're seeing. This is what I'm hearing from other parents. You really need, you really bring it home. And I mean, like I said, it, it's, Sometimes you may feel a little embarrassed that you don't know as much as they know, but again, they do it every day. Um, you know, and don't be afraid to, to talk. Don't be afraid to ask questions, get involved. Um, you know, it, it's one of those, if you, you can't really complain about the things that are being done or the services out there or, you know, anything like that, if you're not doing anything. If you're doing something, you know, it may take a while to get some, a change, but at least you're doing something. You're out there, you're involved, you're active, you're, you're presenting your ideas, your thoughts to those that are in charge. And again, you know, they may be on the, the, in the position that 
hey, no news is good news. We must, we must be doing everything right. Everybody's being taken care of. So I think that's the critical part of it is, is don't be afraid to get involved, ask questions, ask parents that were on, that have been in those leadership roles, that have been on those committees. What, what was your experience? Would you do it again? Um, so bottom line, don't be afraid to get involved. It, it's worth it.